Hey, welcome back to the table. We're getting ready to start 1943 early. How do I know? Because it says so right here. Okay, so this is the um, the back of the advanced rule book that we've been consulting between each mission. Uh, normally we've been using it to select the map, but remember at the beginning of each season, we have to decide uh, or role to determine. And here we actually have a split. We can go Germany North or Mediterranean. Just a quick reminder. Germany North is like skies above the Reich. Mediterranean is going to be storm above the Reich. And like, what does that mean? Well, what it means is like, this is the storm above the Reich um, sheet. So in 1943 early, these Italian fighters become available for us to use. Uh, but if we are in skies above the Reich, because we're in Germany North, then we have to flip to the sky sheet and in 1943 early we have the bf 110s so um it does make a difference and so um if we're in germany north we only use this sheet if we're going to be in mediterranean we're only going to use this one and this one of course came with um, a storm and it is slightly different um so that's the that's where the tricky part comes in and then uh, this here, this mission setup, when we go through to determine, you know, how many OP points and stuff, this is skies above the Reich. And then there's another one for storm, which I know I have it here somewhere. Oh, I think it's, uh, it's on the same sheet as this. So uh, this is the uh, purchase guide, and right there is the the storm above the Reich um, uh, OP points and stuff like that. Now it, they are mostly the same, but uh, they're not always the same. Let's just put it that way. But this die roll is what determines that. Now uh, some of you may be like, "Hey, I just want to see storm above the Reich material." Uh, in that case, I would suggest just don't roll. Just do the Mediterranean. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, this little line, any of the maps that are five, six, seven, eight are storm. And so even if we are Germany North, there's still a chance you're going to get some storm maps. And if you uh, zoom in, even though we go to the Mediterranean, uh, we're most likely going to still have skies above the Reich maps. And that's an interesting concept. And uh, so we would be doing skies above the Reich maps, but with the auxiliary units that come from storm. So it will combo platter quite a bit, and there's a little neat little matrix there. But let's go ahead and roll. So I rolled a five. Uh, we are going to be in Germany North again, and so we're going to be using these maps along the top. So let's go ahead and get that figured out right now. So four means that we're going to be doing map two. So uh, let me uh, get this advanced rule book put away. It does mean that that... Um, that sheet that I just had out for Storm Above the Reich is still going to stay parked in the garage. And there's not much we can do about that. And um, uh, yeah, so now we got to flip to map two. And there's very few people who are watching this video that's going to understand what that thumb means. <laughs> but there's a few, I'm sure, that will remember. Uh, okay. So map two is something we've actually experienced twice already. We're going to get to do it now with 1943. So let's get the 1943 sheet. And there's one other thing I wanted to point out. I think that you're supposed to shuffle your cards in between each mission. I actually went the whole season without shuffling my cards. Um, I don't think it matters, to be honest. Uh, you'll probably have a bit more randomness if you shuffle the cards between each season. Um, but when you... Combine the decks like I did, uh, there was plenty of cards available. And then the continuing fire cards, because, you know, you use one deck for the 109s and the other for the FW-190s, I had plenty of cards for that as well. Okay, so what happens in 1943 early? Well, first thing we see is the BF-110 is available as an auxiliary fighter. So you can spend one OP for four of them or just spend one OP for one of them. I always thought that was the silliest thing, uh, but that's how it works. Um, the uh, 
They can have cannons, rockets, or bombs, but so can our base guys. But let's talk about that real quick. 1943 early gives us the cannon attachment. Cannons are one OP for three of them. So, uh, you know, we can get a few of those. We also have bombs in 1943 early. The bombs are okay. I think they're a little fiddly. And I don't find them to be super helpful, but we can try. I mean, trying to bomb a bomber, you know, from above, they did try it, I guess. Uh, the rockets are what's really good, but you don't get those until 1943 mid, okay? And if we looked at the other sheet, just as a comparison, uh, the cannons would have been available. The cable is not available yet, so their cable would be later. And then their rockets are even much later. So uh, depending on if you're north or south, you're going to get different. So we have the, the bombs available. But if we were playing the Mediterranean, we would only have the cannons available. So you can see that there there is a significant difference between the two. And then uh, also in 1943 early, you can see the FW-190s are available as an auxiliary fighter. Um, that's an interesting one because there are FW-190 auxiliaries, so I don't see there's any harm in, in getting them. Uh, one of the things that, about this game is, let's say you had an all FW-190 squad, you can actually take one of the BF-109s, which are the name guys, and you can take them as auxiliaries, just like you can do this. That is one of the rules. Um, so if I took an all FW-190 squad, I can hire the BF-109s as auxiliaries if I wanted. Um, so it, it's definitely an option. Now, what's the point of these auxiliaries if you're new? The the biggest thing is sometimes the auxiliaries can carry equipment that you can't. Um, the JU-88 in particular has a really nice... Um, uh, the cannon allows the JU-88 to attack from the tail level box during the blast and flak phase. So uh, they don't even have to uh, attack. They could just be sitting at tail level and they can shoot their cannons and and hit you know from there and the same with the me410s so there's a bit of um there's some you know unique advantages that they have um that's one aspect of why you would want auxiliaries the other one is for one op you're getting four fighters right here you're spending one op for one named fighter so you're going to get a lot more planes in the mission now and that is the big 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 one um uh, so that's, uh, you know, I can't stress that enough. To be able to get four BF-110s for the price of just one Bauer, uh, that, that's a very, very big deal, okay? Um, it means that we can do our swarms and stuff just a tad bit easier, you know, all that thing. Uh, we'll have more fighters available to intercept those escorts, right? So these FW-190s were always perfect to just send them off, let the escorts deal with them, you know, and um, and get those pesky escorts off the map. So that's another strategy. Uh, a third strategy is, you know, by having all these BF-110s on the map, they could be the ones that go pursue the bombers. Now, one of the problems with having them pursue the bombers is then you lose out on the victory points, or I'm sorry, the experience points if you shoot down the bomber. But the, you, you get the idea. There's so many possibilities, and um, uh, these extra OPs are very, very helpful. And the fact that you're going to get two bonus OPs because we're doing the vector mapping, that is going to make it uh, the possibilities even better. Okay, so I don't want to belabor it too much, but uh, between that and now we have the ability to do some attachments, uh, it does increase so much uh, what we can do. Now, one other thing, attachments will cause your... Um, when you're in a dogfight with an escort, it causes you to get a negative value added to your... It's like the more attachments you have, the more, you know, weight burdened you are, the uh, worse your die roll is going to be. So when those escorts do intercept you, it's an issue. Now, the other thing for auxiliaries, when they die, it doesn't count against your pilot loss limit, which, remember, we, we lost five pilots last time. If they do die, though, depending on where they die, if they die in the pursuit map, you actually are, uh, I think if they die uh, from the fate boxes over here, I, I have to look it up again, 
Uh, it's been a while since I've played. Um, but when they die, I know for a fact that you're going to lose an OP the next mission. So you get penalized the next mission, so you lose an OP. Um, so if you buy four of these guys for one OP and all four of them die, then you're actually going to lose four OPs in the next mission. I've had some missions where I lost so many OPs that I basically couldn't do the mission. Um, it's possible. All right. The other one is there's, I think there's times when you're going to lose experience points too. Like the staff actually loses experience points when they die. I don't know if that's all the time or just some of the time. That's the part that I'm a little fuzzy on, but I know that at least some of the time it happens and it might be all. I just need to go confirm. Uh, but I want to make sure you're at least aware. So there's all kinds of goody, good stuff. Now, I know it's going to be hours and hours before we're ever going to do a storm uh, mission uh, because this is out for the whole season. But just as a cross comparison, you know, you can only get two uh, Italian fighters for the same OP. Uh, the ju 88 seem to be the same. The 110s are still here. But they're not available until mid, whereas we're going to get them in early. So you can see how things are just a tad bit different. And these uh, Italian fighters have no attachments. Um, I actually don't know what the point of them is. They, they look like they stink. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, there's, I guess they're just cannon fodder. And there is an eight maximum thing, which, you know, that's fine because they're limited by the components. Um, so it does change is what I'm trying to get at. And um, let's see here. For 1943 early, that's 8, 6, 10. And then for us, it's going to be 12, 10, 16. So we're going to get a heck of a lot more uh, OP points than, than uh, you do if you were in Mediterranean. So that is another uh, interesting factor. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get into... I'm going to roll to see if our... Uh, Remember, we need a 9 or a 10, and if our wounded guy is going to get out of jail. There we go. We got a 10. I thought for sure he was going to be there forever. So this was our wounded guy, Frey, and so we got him back. So much more cheering and rejoicing to be had. Okay, so let's jump in and get going with our mission setup. So uh, now we're on 1943 early. We do skip this part here. Um, that's for a campaign start. The season length is just six missions, and you see it goes up to 10, uh, 10, 10, and 10, and then back to six and six for the final two. And this, of course, is if we're in Germany North. I'm assuming it's the same. Uh, actually, 1943, yeah, six missions, and then 10, 10, and 10, and then six and six. So it's the same whether you're North or South. Okay. I rolled a three. So for 1943 early, this is an inbound mission. So we're going to get two victory points for every bomber that we uh, take down. And that is an interesting... So we're going to say 43E. In terms of uh, writing, I'm putting down 43 early. And then we are uh, Germany North. We're doing map 2. And this is an inbound mission, which uh, is the first time we've ever experienced one of those. And then now we're going to roll for OP, and obviously we want some something big. I rolled a 9, which is fairly good. We got 8. Now I could, if I wanted to, bump that to 12. 12 versus 8 is a big deal. Do I want to send spend 7 staff experience for it? And the answer is yes. And here's why. We saved up a bunch, right? So we have some to spend. That's one of the reasons. But the biggest reason of all is it's an inbound. And you get two victory points per kill on an inbound. So two victory points per kill is a very, very big deal. And, uh, you know, you're know you getting double the victory points. So I want as much points as I can get to be out on the field so I can score some points. This is, this is like, you know, it's basically... Uh, you know, this is our chance to get that, you know, that score in a, in a sport. You know, you, you got to be aggressive. And right now is the time to be aggressive. If this was an outbound mission, then maybe I would just slack off a little because I'm just going to get one victory point anyways. 
So let's do that. I'm gonna spend seven. So I'm gonna put a minus seven inside the staffle and uh, on the experience earned. And uh, we're gonna change that to a 10. And I know that stinks, we're only changing it by one, but uh, I want 12 OP. 12 OP is OP. Uh, <laughs> that's more of my, those bad dad jokes. Um, so 12 OP is gonna be really good. And I may spend seven again, because look here. If I roll a one, escorts are gonna be available the entire mission. And since this is inbound, this means that they're gonna be with them from the start, but not leave until turn six, turn five, and then turn three. So let's see what we get. So I rolled a nine, which is very good. In fact, it's perfect. So they're gonna be with them from the beginning, but they leave on turn three. That is fantastic. So, and, and then also, instead of it being the P-47s, it's a Spitfire. So um, that's also good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out the Spitfires and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And let's randomly pick two, because uh, they're light, right? It's a light Spitfire. L3S, okay. And um, the rest of them will go off to the side. And uh, I kept forgetting to do this last time, or, you know, last season, and somebody even caught it on YouTube. Um, but eventually uh, I did fix, or I didn't fix it, but I eventually caught it myself before they made their comment. But people are, uh, I think, catching up to me on the videos. I, I tend to, like, when I have time to play, I go pretty intense. And I know people comment about how my videos come out faster than they can watch them. And that's great. I mean, I, I have no problem with that. But sometimes I don't get the feedback until it's too late. <laughs> and so um, I know some of you guys are catching up and, and you now realize I, I did figure it out. Um, but obviously there was a few videos where I, I missed it. So I'm going to do this now instead of waiting until uh, later because I don't want to forget. So I rolled a four. So there's going to be three of them in the forward and two of them in the below trailing. Okay. So that's how they're going to start. And they will be there from turn one. So um, there's no harm in doing this. Uh, one of the tricks to make the game a little bit harder, it's like an optional variant in the rule book, is that you don't roll this until it's actually the start of the turn. So you've already made commitments on where your bombers are gonna approach, and then you have to, or your fighters, I mean. So you have to assume, you know, basically you have to just study all these places and know, oh, I gotta avoid this one and this one, you know, because these are all the places that they can attack directly. So uh, anyways, I know I'm belaboring it a bit, but I uh, wanna make sure I teach it. If, uh, you know, cause some people may not be aware. All right, so now, oh, now here's another big mistake. I, um, I rolled for the escorts before I purchased my OP. That's breaking the rules. I was supposed to make all my OP purchases first before knowing what the escort situation is. Now, one of the largest reasons why is because the, the FW-190s are really good at distracting the, the escorts. And your decision in Skies Above the Reich um, was always, am I going to spend points on FW-190s? And so I'd buy a few if I knew the escorts were going to be pesky. And if I know that they're not going to be pesky, then I would maybe skimp on the FW-190s and buy something else. So... Um, uh, there is a reason why you have to make your commitment on your purchases before knowing what the escort situation is. Uh, so I broke that. I, I got to now retcon this. But I'm going to reassure everybody, you know, like, because if this stuff bothers you, I was already planning on spending my seven experience points to do this. I had my staff will experience was there and ready. I was going to guarantee the outcome of this escort situation. So so what I'm trying to say is don't lose sleep over this. Don't get all concerned. Um, I was going to make sure that this is the outcome. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't matter that I didn't make my purchases. That's, that's where I'm trying to go with all this. Okay, <clears throat> so what are my purchases? This decision has just gotten a lot harder because we have our staff that we want to bring out, but then we also have everything else. So we have Ifland, who now has two skills Let's get him out there. He's expert number one. We have um, 
bar is the other one, expert two. And then we have Schmidt is expert three. So we have three experts available. Um, I have a whole bunch of green guys. Frey, Luce, Oblisser, Richter, and Aarons. They're all veterans who have experience. And then I, uh, and Buckfargan was a greenie, but he was able to get rid of his green status and he has experience as well. He has two. So, uh, we have some experienced veterans that just aren't quite ready to be experts, but they're close. So we could spend all of our points getting those guys out or, um, so like when it comes to swarm, we can get four BF 110s and they could be the ones that swarm. And then our guys can be the ones that go evasive. So our guys aren't taking the hits as badly. These guys are the ones that are. Okay, so there's some some things there that uh, you know we we can factor in. Now this plus one for the auxiliary fighter, uh, that plus one means they're easier to hit. So you know these are big. You know they're basically half fighters, half bombers you know they're heavily armored fighters if you want to put it that way or whatever they're they're not as maneuverable or agile so they have a plus one which means that they're um they're 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 gonna get hit more and i'm pretty sure that plus one is to the to the threat level so um if this is a two it turns into a three with a bf 110 okay and um uh, let me pause and just make sure I'm I'm quoting the rules right, but I'm pretty darn sure that's what that means. And the JU88s are even worse, so that's always something you have to to keep in mind. So let me make sure I verify that. Okay, I described it perfectly, so um, that's exactly what it does. The only thing else to point out that the rules mention that I I failed to mention is that this increases the the um, the fatal level or the lethality. They call it the lethal level. I keep calling it threat. Um, it increases the threat level by one, but only for that plane. So like if there's other planes in the same space, they don't get increased by one. So so this is a, um, it does increase the threat level, just like I explained, but it only applies to the plane itself. And same with the JU-88s. Now, <clears throat> JU-88s are a different animal. Uh, these guys, they do, they are easier to, to get hit. But where they make up for it is... Um, the rockets and the bombs, because you're not going to be in a threat area. And, and and this is the part I need to explain a little bit more. But for bombing, you're going to be up in this high bombing section. So see that there? Only fighters with bomb attachments are allowed there. And there is no um, lethality or threat up there. So, uh, and then flak doesn't attack it. So you got to go up there to drop your bombs. Well, you're not going to be in these these numbers they don't impact you and then when you're sending your rockets you're going to be at tail level to shoot your rockets again you're going to do it from there you're not going to be attacking out here so there's some uh what's i mean they're they're easier to be hit but they're not necessarily going to be uh attacking like the way a bf 109 or an fw 190 would so they're going to have some nuance to them now the cannons, we gotta make sure we, we look at those. For each damage result, we're gonna draw two damage markers and we get to select which one we're gonna apply. So if we do a damage, it's still gonna just do one damage, but now we get to select which marker we wanna use. And that can be pretty powerful, especially like when I'm trying to get, okay, we have four wing damage, I need one more wing damage, so let's pick the wing one, or maybe we wanna pick an engine one, or you you know what I mean. So. Uh, it gives you uh, some more control over what kind of damage you're doing to the bombers. That's what the cannon does for you. Now that cannon attachment can be put on anybody. I don't think there's anybody who can't have a cannon. And then the other thing is, is that with our planes from our name guys, you can have an armor and a cannon or an... Uh, Oh, I see. So you can have an armor, a cannon, and a rocket or a bomb, but you can't have a rocket and a bomb. So you may attach cannon, rockets, and armor to the same BF-109, 
which would be three attachments. However, you may not attach two cannons or stuff like that. So uh, that's that's what you so you got to just pay attention to how it's worded. Okay. The other thing, this pursuit map 1942 is no longer the pursuit map. It is now uh, 1943 pursuit map, which is just you just flip it over. So the rudder and the elevator numbers changed a little. The wing got a little stronger. You remember it was five, now it's six. And um, the engine blow up is a higher die roll. So it's a lot harder for the first engine, but the second engine damage is still just as easy. Fuselage is the same. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be the same. There's some stuff that's gonna be a little different. So uh, make sure you study that in your game before you go. And remember, we have 12 points to spend. I've only spent three. So let's keep going. Uh, I cannot get rockets at this time. I can get bombs. Do you guys want to see how bombs work? Um, bombs are, from my experience, bombs were pretty crappy. <laughs> Uh, they weren't as good as rockets, let's put it that way. Um, so here's the procedure. First thing you do is aim. So you're going to select an element to aim. And it doesn't matter what space, you're just picking the element. And then... Um, then we're going to go to step 2A, which is this. So if you're a JU-88 carrying bombs, and you roll one to a three, the bomb misses. Otherwise, it's a blast, four to 10. And then the BF-110s miss at 40% of the time. So 60% of the time, it'll hit. And then if it's your BF-109, um, or possibly the FW-190, then uh, you can hit 50% of the time. So um, what does a blast do? That's what this down here is, the blast location. So for each target marker, we're gonna roll two dice and um, and then you're going to determine where the blast is going to occur. And that's how bombs work. The cable works a little differently, but uh, the bomb will create a, a similar blast as the, um, as the rockets. Uh, it's just that they're a lot lower probability. Um, so you got some chances to, for it to be a dud and completely miss. So it's not the worst thing in the world. No, do we really want to do that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look up the, the bomb to make sure I didn't miss anything when I copied it over. Um, when you saw me handwrite all the bomb table, that was uh, because I'm trying to like reduce the number of a, of of player aids that are on my table. So I'm going to just make sure I didn't miss anything because whenever the blast happens, I want to make sure it's identical to the rocket blast. That's the first thing I'm going to check when I pause. The second thing I'm checking when I pause is I want to make sure that the FW-190s have the same attachment rules as the BF-109s because this FW-190 is not our player storm above the Reich FW-190. It's the auxiliary one. So the auxiliary one can have a cannon or a rocket or bomb, but not both, right? I don't know if that's true for the player controlled FW-190s. That's what I gotta go check. So I'm gonna check those two things and I will be right back. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the FW-190 does have some changes. You probably saw it pop up on the screen here. While I was on pause, I wrote this in. The player-controlled FW-190s can have one armor and one cannon or a rocket. So they can only have two attachments, whereas the BF-109s can have three. So um, there's definitely a difference there. And then uh, I've, I've been on pause for a very long time. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the other rule was that I was looking up. Um, but whatever it was, I confirmed that everything was okay. <laughs> um I do remember the uh, FW-191. What was what the heck was the other rule? Um, it'll come to me. So I'm going to have to rewatch my video just to uh, figure out what it is that I was supposed to tell you. I, I paused to look up two things, I, and I did look them both up, and they were both uh, very simple answers. So uh, my apologies there. 
it'll come to me. I'm sure it will. Okay, so yes, we have to finish uh, purchasing our stuff here. And um, hmm. Oh, I remember what it was. The bomb blast is covered exactly the way I uh, said. The uh, bomb blast um, works just like the rocket blast. So I got everything covered there. Okay, I feel so much better now <laughs> that I finally remembered why I went on pause. Um, so I think we want to definitely get four BF-110s. I, I don't want to get FW-190s. I, I really don't think I need to. Um, these are inferior in every way to the FW-190s we have in our squad. So, and they cost the same, right? Now, the only difference is, of course, if one of these die, it doesn't count against my, my season loss limit. But, for example, the BF-110s, I got four of them right there, right? You know, boom. I got four more I can hire for another one. I mean, within two OP points, I now have eight planes on that mission, which is, like, way more than I ever considered having in 1942. So that's what I'm talking about. It's it's like really, really good. Um, now, the interesting part is um, because we're playing a combined campaign, I happen to have... And I'm just showing you where I'm looking here. These are all my components. Here's four more BF-110s. There's three of them at least. These are some JU-88s. These are some ME-410s. There's the MC-202s. The Romanian fighters. Some 163s, 262s. Get those out of the way. These FW-190s we can almost put back in the box, but I'll keep them out. And here's a bunch of JU-88s. Here's some more JU-88s. ME-410s again. Some of my name guys. Another JU. And here you go. There's six more BF-110s. So for whatever reason, the, um, the expansion gave me less BF-110s. They only gave me six. That's interesting to have to have less of those in the expansion, unless I made a mistake over here. So the JU-88s, there are only six of those as well in the expansion. Whereas if you look at, I don't know, there's only six in uh, Skies Above the Reich. They give you a whole bunch of the uh, Romanian and Italian fighters. That's an interesting uh, quirk. So uh, you only get three here with the expansion. So let me look at the... Uh... Oh, one OP only buys three of them in the uh, when you're in the Mediterranean. You can only buy three for one OP. So that's why they only provide three of them. Very interesting. Um, now, uh, one thing to understand, I can't buy more. It says eight max. Okay, so uh, I, yes, I was I was uh, sitting there thinking, well, can I buy even more? And the answer is no. Um, there's eight max, so um, that's only two op. This is uh, three, four, five. I still have seven op left to go. Now, one of the things is is we got these cannons here, and you can see there's twelve max. So um, if I want to buy twelve cannons, I can go you know, three at a time, right? So there's one, two, three, and four. So there's 12 cannons, so that would be four OP. And I have a bunch more because I merged the components of the game. 
So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I still have three left. So, oh, I could get some bombs. <laughs> we could try that if you'd like. Um, now the bombs are an interesting concept. Um, I can get four bombs for two OP. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would put me to 11. So let's go ahead and get four bombs. One, two, three, four. I don't even know if I need 12 cannons, so we might be able to get some OP back that way. I mean, we have eight, nine, 10, 11 uh, fighters, I guess. But uh, if you have a cannon, Okay, so we can look at this as one of several ways. We can look at this as two waves of swarm, or we could look at it as one of them is just going to be a bomber group, um, or they could be a bomber group and then eventually be a swarm group. I mean, there's a lot of uh, possibilities here. How many bombs? It says eight max. So if I spent two more OP for more bombs. Okay, I'm gonna pause and think about this for a bit. Okay, I think I made my decision. What I'm doing is I'm gonna get four bombs for these four BF-10. BF-110s are basically gonna be bombers. We're gonna drop eight bombs with them. And then I bought one set of three cannons. So this is two, four, five OP, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm bringing out five guys. The three cannons are gonna go on the FW-190s. So uh, there's a lot to track here. And these components uh, do get a little annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the bombs here. And we know that those are for the BF-110s. So they're just gonna be here. And then as we spend them, they'll, they'll uh, you know, uh, they'll, you know, there'll be no bombs left. The uh, bomb markers cause them to get disadvantages when they're um, in a dogfight. I think that's also true for the cannons. But the cannons uh, we know are just for the FW-190, so I'm also going to put those off to the side. And uh, the only ones that are uh, naked are the BF-109s. Okay, the plan is... We're gonna drop bombs with these two guys. Then they're gonna swarm. These guys are gonna be the ones that go into evasive mode to help the swarm get all the attack advantages. And these guys have the cannons, so they're gonna just, uh, you know, cause a ruckus wherever they go. That's the idea. Um, as with all uh, well-laid plans, what's the best way to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Um, Okay, so here we go. We gotta do the vector map. And the vector map does change. Well, the, the vector map is boring. It doesn't change. The, this part changes. We're in 1943 now, and you can see that the Mediterranean and Germany have their own columns. Uh, we are in Germany, so we're gonna get this column. And it's, they do have some slight differences between them. And then uh, here, you can see there are some differences there as well. The Mediterranean one has some serious interception going on if you roll low. Holy bucket. Um, wow. Okay, I'm glad I'm not in the Mediterranean. Uh, but okay, let's, um, let's get all of our guys out here. We have... Oh, look at this. We get two extra OP. So we could have used that to buy some more cannons or whatever. So let me think about that now. <laughs> I forgot about that. We get two extra OP. Um, I think I'm just going to bring out another FW-190, which would mean then that I don't have cannons on everybody anymore. So you know what? To make that look a little simpler, I'll just bring out two uh, BF-109. So we'll keep the, the 109s naked. How about that? So... I should probably make them all one batch. Um, I didn't do the uh, the mission setup yet, so uh, let me let me finish that, and then we can continue with this. So I gotta grab 
some stuff here. So many uh, things are still out. All right, we are on map two inbound. So we're gonna go to page seven. And I'm just gonna go right over top of this. And um, they, now it is possible they're gonna still have some damage. And it just means that um, they were intercepted by another staff of fighters. That doesn't mean that they were damaged, or they were damaged by other flak that they flew over on their way to the target. So that's what we're going to do right now. I rolled a seven, so uh, nothing happens. It's a clear sky for them. And then we're going to go to anchored. I rolled a three, so level and low flank is anchored. And I'm going to grab those markers and put... So the anchored, uh, just as a reminder, it means that if you're coming in from the side here, these uh, these flank areas get a bonus to their lethality. And then for the sun, I rolled a 10, so there's no sun. Uh, tactical points, oh, I only rolled a 1. I mean, technically it was sideways. Ugh. That would be one TP is all I would get. All right, well, that's what it is. So we're gonna be at three because of uh, the little mod that we're playing. Then the flight limit is a seven and that's what we really needed. We needed that to be up. So it's gonna be nine and it's actually gonna be 11 with the bonus. So uh, the technical points are a little low, but with the flight limit all the way up to 11, um, we might be able to, uh, you know, get some extra points. And so that's always going to be good. And there's no contrails. Okay, so now we can go back to this map. A uh, couple of things here. There's some new symbols. So this little G symbol is the garble. We actually ran into that just once last time. This little T symbol is actually an interception from a different type of... Uh, uh, fighter. The T is, I think it's the Kitty, no, the Kitty Hawk is the K. Uh, the T, let's see, we got the P-38 Lightning, the P-51 Mustang, I gotta look up what the T is. So, uh, M should be the Mustang, that's the Kitty Hawk, that's the, uh, this is the P-38 Lightning, there's a T. Oh, you know what? I have fighters. There's fighters from Skies Above the Reich that I think that are unique to Skies Above the Reich. And that might be what the T is for. So we have, um, yeah, right there, the P-47 Thunderbolt. That's the T. So I got to get those guys out. Three, four, five, six. There's only one more. Spitfire, lightning, lightning, lightning. Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Oh, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I had them all. I'm sitting here looking for another one. My apologies. Total apologies there. I should have paused the video too. I have the technology now. Pause videos and not make you guys wait for me to be over analytical. And I still haven't paused and I'm still waiting. <laughs> okay, so these guys might come out sometime. These are the P-47s. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
put them over here in the pile. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's no other extra symbols that I can think of that we need to worry about, just that escorts can come, uh, and uh, that stinks. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, well, the same that we thing that we always do. Uh, what is it? Inky? Inky in the brain? Stinky? The same thing we always do, stinky. We're going to conquer the world. All right, um... We're going to roll two dice. And as always, the higher the better. Although there is an interesting wrinkle with the Mediterranean, which we are not. There's an escort that intercepts you if you get a straggler. <laughs> but that's not the case with us. Um, the, uh, the higher the better for us. Uh, we want to get higher than a four. Actually, we want to get higher than an eight. Anything below an eight or anything eight or below stinks. And, of course, we get an 8. All right, so what stinks about that? Well, we get this little dot, which means there's a malfunction and somebody has to fly home. So I'm going to go ahead and just fly uh, loose home. <clears throat> so we lost one. And that's why they give you two extra OP. Um, so you can get those two extra fighters that you're going to end up losing. All right, we're going to move up. Roll again. I, I saw a review on a Facebook Word Gaming channel. Uh, somebody reviewed this game, and uh, and of course they were positive. I think what's interesting is, uh, well, first of all, it's a great game. I mean, that's why I'm playing it, and I'm gushing over it all the time. But they really could have done a lot of things better with this game. And, um, you know, and, and whoever reviewed it, I don't even remember his name, I know he's with me on the Solitaire Wargaming channel on Facebook. Uh, this is no offense, but the problem I have with reviewers is that they're, they're overly positive. And I think, you know, obviously it has to be intentional because anytime I negatively talk about anything, whether it's a game, uh, my motorcycle, I, I made some negative comments about my motorcycle when I purchased that and I put that on YouTube. You'll see it on my channel. Um, there's people who are really triggered by my negative comments. And the thing is, is my negative comments are mine. I mean, I own them. They, that's how I feel about the game, or it's what I think about the game. It's not always about emotions um, or about the motorcycle. So what I think about this is that Storm Above the Right could have been so much better. Um, I'm enjoying this, don't get me wrong, but that's because Skies Above the Right was already a great game. Storm of the Reich should have made a great game even greater. I don't think it has. I think it's just more of a great game. And to me, that's a negative to, to this game. Um, and then what's other also interesting is that in the review, he talks about this vector map, and there's people commenting on the review about how awesome this vector map is. This vector map is a silly little game where you roll two dice and see what happens to you. Okay, what other games do you roll two dice and see what happens to you? Uh, Monopoly. When has Monopoly ever been anything but an Ameritrash game? And this is the thing, I guess, you know, some of you like it when I rant like this, and I know some of you don't, and I apologize to you that don't, but this is a roll two dice and see what happens to you game. Where the heck is my strategy in this vector map mini game? Uh, oh, I could go left, middle, right. <laughs> That's my strategy. I go left, middle, right. And then I roll dice to see what happens to me. That's a good roll. I should keep that. Um, the, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, that's, that's all this vector map thing is. It's not that thrilling. Now, I'm starting to learn how to take advantage of it. It can definitely hurt me, um, before the mission starts. The, the fact that it gives me two extra tactical and flight limit points is really nice. The two extra OP is really nice. But it's only really nice if I can get to the end without spending what they gave me. Because now I got extra, right? Right now I'm still one OP ahead. Because I had to lose one of my planes. Um, if I have to lose another one, then I basically I'm at a wash, right? It would have been like I never did the vector map at all. But there is nothing exciting about this. This is... A mini game, yes, and 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 I don't think a mini game should necessarily be, you know, 
uh, life-changing, but it's a mini game where you roll dice and see what happens to you, aka Monopoly, or uh, or spin a wheel and see what happens to you. Which game is that one? Oh yeah, it's Life. None of us play that game because it's stupid. I mean, even when my kids were little, I don't play those games with them because they're stupid. I mean, most people walk, grow up playing those games, and whenever you tell them, hey, I like to play board games as a hobby, they are like, they look at you and they go, oh, I hate board games. And guess which board games they're thinking of in their mind? They're thinking of Monopoly and Life. Oh, and Pictionary. Those are the games that most people think when you tell them you play board games. They don't understand that there's this game that has so much so much depth to it that you can't even explain it all in one dinner time conversation. It has so much depth to it that you actually need to experience it to figure out how awesome it really is. And some of them have so much depth to it that it's too much for a new person. Like you have to start on something a little bit later first and then work your way up to these more advanced games. But that's the thing. This vector map is, it's a mini game and it's a crappy mini game to boot. I roll dice and see what happens to me. That's all it is. So, uh, again, I didn't mean to pick on, and I didn't name the guy or anything who made this review, but I think this is why I don't do reviews. Because nobody with a straight face who's actually played the game can say something positive about this vector map. I mean, I guess I can say some positive things. I mean, the positive things are it adds another dimension and, you know, it makes you, you have more planning you got to do. I have more choices I get to make. Oh, okay. Whippity ding dong do. I mean, is that worth going paying 60 bucks, 80 bucks for a new game to get this? No, no, not even in the slightest. And anybody who is genuinely reviewing this and Players Aid included, I love picking on Players Aid um, and I'm going to do it probably till the end of time. But they sat down and talked about how awesome this game was. I, I'm, I'm truly of the belief that these people have never played this game. They just do a review and they never actually played it. And uh, anyways, I'm, I'm sorry for the rant though, but it just, um, uh, that review triggered me apparently, right? Because uh, that's why I'm talking about it. But I can't, like, I do not have it in my soul to be that positive about something that is not worth being positive about. Now, did the designers put a lot of time and effort into this game? Yes, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, I, I really love this game, but he could have done better with Storm. And I, I don't think that he gets away, just because he made one of my favorite games of all time, doesn't mean that Storm gets the 10 out of 10 checkbox. It doesn't. Storm for me is a five out of 10. And that's a low, low rating. And the reason it's a 5 out of 10 is because Skies of the Reich has everything I need. Storm of the Reich gave me nothing extra that I wanted. Uh, it just gave me more. Complication, uh, roll two dice, see what happens to you. That's what it gave me. And, uh, you know, am I still going to play with them combined? Of course I am. I bought both games. Is Storm of the Reich by itself a great game? Sure. If you don't own Skies, then it's a 9 out of 10 game. But only if you don't own Skies. If you already own Skies, Storm of the Break is a 5 out of 10. And that, my friends, is an honest rating of both of these games. Storm actually has two ratings to it. it the, the rating that it gets, it all depends on whether you already own Skies. That's, that's what changes the rating. And so, uh, anyways, I, I, um, I can't, um, well, first of all, this is a playthrough, so I'm going to stop talking about that, but that's, that's my review so far. We are what, one season in, um, what am I getting now? I, oh, I have Italian fighters instead of BF 110s. Um, I have Romanian fighters instead of an FW 190. Like, I mean, that's not. Oh, I have a cable instead of bombs. I mean, I mean, come on, folks. There, there's not like a, there's nothing earth shattering about this. Now, if if somebody were to say, okay, I only get to buy one. Do I pick, buy Skies of the Reich or Storm? 
I guess some people would say by storm, by storm, because, you know, it has this vector map thing and Skies doesn't. Um, you know, I, I honestly don't know what to even tell somebody. I, you know, to me, they're the same, even with the vector map. So just buy one, whichever one's cheaper and available. That's what I would answer that question with. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, I don't hate it. Not even in the slightest do I hate this game. I just think it could have been better. And that's all. And, and uh, you know, I, I manage people at work. I, some people are great performers and some people could be better. And those people who could be better, I have to have the strength to tell them that. Because if I don't tell them that, and then it comes review time and they don't get the, the raise that they're looking for or the, the performance bonus that they're looking for, I failed them. And as their leader, I have to, I have to build them up. And you don't build them up by, by lying to them about how well they're doing. And when it comes to this board game world, people lie about the game. And I'm sure somebody's going to be like, well, they're not necessarily lying. They're speaking their own personal truth. No, they're not. They're not speaking their personal truth. They know damn well that this vector map is just a crappy roll two dice and see what happens to you. That their experience is no different than mine. And to say that this is a fantastic add-on is just bunk. It's absolute bunk. And, and, and you know, and, and that's, that's the honest-to-goodness truth. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Back to regularly scheduled programming. I, um, we move up. Now I'm going to roll, and I'm going to wish I had that 12, aren't I? Let's see. Oh, I got a 14 instead. Yay. <laughs> so, actually, it's a, look at that. It's 12 to 14, so it's the same. All right, we got an R, which could be bad for us, but we also got a, um, a bomber. So let's do the R first. Um, we're gonna roll a die and apply to our group. If we get an even, we get plus two OP. If we get an odd, then we're rerouted. Okay, that's not super bad. And of course we got the odd, come on. All right, we do have to pay a TP. We were rerouted, so that part hurts. And, um, we have to take a delay marker and give it to one of our guys. Now, this part I'm okay with because the delay marker I'm going to give uh, to the BF-109s. And the reason is, is I need them to help the BF-110s when we do our little Jeff strategy. But the BF-110s are going to drop their bombs first. So I want these guys to arrive later anyways. So uh, that's all good. Now, the straggler. I rolled an odd. So once again, we didn't get the even we were looking for. So that's four wing damage on this guy. Um, and then we got to decide, are we going to send somebody to pursue him? And uh, my answer is absolutely. We're going to send somebody to pursue him. So I can send Bar, Ifland, or Aarons. All three of them have a cannon, which is good. Ifland can get some extra hits in. Yeah, we're going to do that. So Iflin's going to go to take this guy on. And I'm going to have to give him some points, right? Because there's no engine damage on this guy. And that's the part that hurts because I'm only at two. And if I give him two points, that puts me to zero tactical points. I could be in trouble. And uh, that I, I don't like. But uh, we're going to go ahead and move to the next part. And let's roll our dice. And I rolled a six, which is awful. And we are being intercepted by uh, P, which are um, the P-38s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we got some P-38s. Um, and uh, the good news is it's only one stack of P-38s. Um, and uh, what's interesting about this is the P-38s aren't the escorts that are over here. And if you recall, um, when we get intercepted, um, one of these gets taken away. Um, so with the P-38s being what intercepts us, uh, 
We're going to have to pick one of these, by the way. Make sure they're nice and random. I need to make sure that, like, once we resolve this, uh, we are in the approach zone, which causes one of these to be taken off. But this is a different fighter type, and that's what has me confused. So I'm going to pause and make sure I refresh my rules on this. We've only done this once before, so uh, let's make sure uh, we got it right. Okay, I'm really glad I checked. So um, the way this works is they give you a, a fighter type here or an escort type, but that's only in case that there's no escorts actually on the map. So we use the Spitfires. That trumps whatever's written on here. Uh, we use whatever's written on here. Like if there was no escorts here at all, then we would use what's here. Okay, does that make sense? So it's, it's basically, you know, well, if you don't have anybody there, we'll tell you to use this kind. So that, um, and yes, if I can get uh, these guys to return, so whichever one we get intercepted with, uh, if that guy returns, we then randomly pick another one from here because we're in the approach zone. So two of these escorts are going to go away. All right, I'm going to do even odd. And so now we get that even number, you jerk. All right, so that's the one that's going to intercept us. And then we'll even odd again to figure out which one goes away. Okay. So now which group are they going to intercept? That is the bigger challenge. And <laughs> I don't want them to intercept the BF-110s. Uh, so I can have them intercept our two FW-190s, but they each have cannons. So I'm going to go ahead and intercept the BF-109s, which could ruin our day, to be quite honest. Because um, we're going to have to spend BV value to get out of this. Yeah, this could ruin our day, but we're going to do it. The BF-109s. Uh, so we got a three on the Spitfire, and we are tied. Uh, what happens when we're tied? I don't remember. I think it means the answer is no. Okay, so are the fighters higher than... Oh, oh, we get to see if we... Uh, we get to roll, and if we get a 10, we evade them. And so I got a 5, which is not enough to evade, and I can't add a delay marker, which is what I really wanted to do, because uh, that only gets me to a 7. And there's no contrails, or a 7 would have been enough. So um, we don't have more fighters in the escort. We have the same number. Uh, so the answer is no. But are we higher than the escort? And that's where we got to roll now. And we are not higher. Uh, I could spend TP to make it go up, but I have no TP left. So now, we, um, now we're in trouble. We actually have to do the real battle. And it's a BF-109, and the answer is no, no. So we're doing the bottom row, and the bottom row is nothing but Bs, and if I roll a 1, we get killed. A 1 through 5, we get killed. So that's not good. Um... So I need a 6 or 10, and then we have a break-off, and the break-off, of course, is going to be per the stupid rules. So this is going to be annoying. And I rolled an 8, so that part's good. Uh, the 8 is... We're on the bottom row here. The 8 is a B. It's a break-off, which normally means this. But remember, uh, we have to look in the rules. And that's also annoying, that I have to pull out the rule book just to see what happens. But that is, it's page 23, it's called Battle Results. So for the break off, or break away, the escort marker is removed from play and may not come back. So that's one. Uh, the, uh, the group shifts to a lower altitude. If already low, it must spend a TP or return to base. So we're gonna have to go to low altitude. Then some, or possibly all the fighters in the group must return to base. It's based on the BV value, and the BV value has to equal the 3 of that. So the good news is, is nobody's dying. Um, but the bad news is, is we're going to lose everybody. And uh, watch what I mean. First of all, we're going to low. And um, uh, we're delayed. We got this value of 3. Actually, I think I got it. I can get rid of Schmidt because his value is three. So he's going to have to break away 
and then this guy goes with him, and then the other two remain. So we were able to do it, but our expert just had to leave. And actually, we came out okay. And then the other thing I was worried about is since we moved low, uh, what's going to happen to us for entering the map? And you can see that low is zero TP, but we have to enter low, and that's okay. Here, we have to enter low as well. It's zero TP. And then over here, you know, we're not in high, so we don't have to worry about that. So it turned out to be uh, completely okay. And um, because the BV value allowed us to break away and everybody else gets to continue fighting. But let me make sure that there's no delay marker put on. So BV values must equal or exceed the escort number. Additionally, one of the removed fighters must be the same type used in resolving the aerial combat. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Um, yeah, so we ended up uh, losing two of our fighters. So the two OP they gave us are gone. We ended up losing uh, one of our tactical points. So we ended up with a plus one there. I'm pursuing a bomber right now, which uh, could work out to our advantage. And our flight limit went up. So uh, I think overall we're okay. Okay, so we have a delay here. And he has to come in low. And we're going to have to do a flank. So I'm going to come in. Um, I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to leave the delay marker on him. Because he's not... On turn one, we'll move him there. And then on turn two, he'll enter the map. Which is exactly what happens when you're delayed by one turn. Uh, just understand he's technically not on the map. But we're going to put him on there so I don't forget. It's always about my bad memory that I'm worried. Um, we have these guys. And there's some tricky trickers that we got to do here. These guys need to fly high. Okay. And you can see this little arrow here. Um, let me zoom in for you. You can see it's a zero TP to go from high tail up to the high bombing. That's where we need to go. But you need to be high tail to do that, right? So we got to be very careful. I can come in low tail, right? And then on turn one, I can go all the way to high tail if I pay one TP. I don't have one TP. I can go from low to level and then from level to high, but that will take me several turns. If I come over here low, I can go to any tail for zero TP. Any tail. I can go straight from low all the way to high tail. So that's the the thing you need to take advantage of when you're playing this game. Now here, you can go straight to high bombing for 2 TP. That's an interesting one, but it costs you TP. But let's not, um, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's look over here. Um, here, if you're in the nose, you can go to tail high or any flank. See, it actually costs you a TP to go to tail high, um, to any flank. And then here you go to high bombing, but it's three TP. So uh, the only way the high bombing is free is if you can get to high tail. And the best way to get to high tail is for everybody to enter right here. And here's what's even more beautiful about this, is I'm gonna use my regroup rule and get eight tactical points. And it's great, it's great to be strategic. <laughs> and this is the stuff that makes us enjoy the game. These choices, the, the strategy of, I'm gonna put eight guys here so I can get my tactical points back. That is what makes this game great. Rolling two dice to see what happens to you is not what makes this game great. It is a very distinct difference. And yes, I'm still triggered by that review and I'm so sorry. Um, okay, uh, let's keep going. I gotta figure out where these guys are coming in. They both have cannons. They, they rock. So, uh, they rock and they roll. Um, but what are we gonna do with them? Like, am I gonna attack right away with them? Uh, I have to, like, I have to make sure they're not in an element when it, that's getting bombed, because they can get hit by the bombs, uh, that are being dropped. Uh, the escorts are actually out for the first couple turns, so we got to worry about them. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in on the same space because I'm going to use a regroup action and just maximize the crap out of it. And uh, I'm, I never, you know, show myself on camera because this game is, my videos are about the game. They're not about me. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm currently doing a, a Hulk Hogan flex right now. Um, so we're, we're going to maximize it. Um, okay. So with all that done, before we start turn one, let's figure out and do our uh, our bombing run and see if our risk to spend those tactical points is gonna pay off. So we have this bomber, and if you recall, I paid two tactical points, so I just have two. And he has one wing damage. Well, he has four wing damage, but one token. And you can see there, if I roll a nine or a 10, the bomber is destroyed. And let's zoom out and see what I rolled. I rolled a four. So the bomber is not destroyed. And then Iflin's coming in and we get to choose what we're gonna do. Let's roll for sun. I rolled a 10, which means the sun is right here at two o'clock high. So do I come in at two o'clock high? My thoughts are no. Now, Iflin has two skills. He has luck and he has aim. And if you remember, uh, aim means that when he hits, he gets to hit twice. So um, we're gonna, we need to make it, make the most of it. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna follow our, our logic path of, okay, let's come in high. Since that's the most expensive one, let's see if that's the one that actually hits. So we're gonna do a high nose. And here we go, and the threat level is zero. So high nose, we got a hit. Yay. Um, and then we get to ignore collision, which is even better. And we ignore the three, which is also good. So we're gonna get a hit, and then I'm gonna use my aim skill to add, to make it, it turns into two hits, basically. Um, so let me make sure that's what the aim skill says. When a fighter's attack scores a damage, draw two instead of one, and each counts as a separate damage result, apply both. And if you have a cannon, you get to draw two damage markers for the first result, apply whichever one you want, and then another two for the second result. Guess what? He's an FW-190, and guess what he has? He has a cannon, folks. I forgot to take it off the map, but here it is. Another Hulk Hogan flex. So we're gonna draw two, pick whichever one we want to apply, and this is where it's deadly. The the cannon plus the aim, remember I told you the aim was already deadly for this phase of the game, but the cannon <laughs> makes it even deadlier. So here we go. We're gonna get two hits in on this sucker. We're gonna draw two, and I get the, this side doesn't matter, so they're both fuselage, which stinks. However, I get to look at them, and look at this. That's an elevator, that's a guard or um, gunner, the gunner stinks. The elevator, however, that's a blow up right there. Three is a kill. <laughs> See how powerful cannon is? <laughs> so cannons are awesome. Um, you get to draw two and pick which one hits. And then uh, the aim means I could have drawn another two. So this would have been, been thrown back in the cup. And the guy's already dead, folks, but I'm doing this just for fun. So let's say I draw two more. Look at how powerful it is. Oh, look at that. I got a wing and a turret. One of these things is so much superior to the other. Which one would that be? Well, guess what? This wing, I killed it again. <laughs> you see how powerful that is? That That is awesome. And um, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just, uh, that's what happens when you don't have anybody actually talking to you when you're making these videos. So we got ourselves I'm clapping here. We got ourselves a kill. This uh, this cannon will just put it off to the side. Iflint is good to be a gangster. I did not need my two tactical points, but we didn't know that. So uh, we got all kinds of cash and prizes we got to dish out here. So let's get started with, let's start with the staff. Okay, first of all, the staff, as you can see, has a minus seven. Uh, we get two victory points. Whoops. We get two victory points for the kill. 
I'm sorry, we get two experience points for the kill. But because it's an inbound mission, we're going to get two victory points for the kill. Not one, but two, baby. It takes two. Um, so uh, that is really, really good. I mean, you know, think about this. It took us three missions before we scored two. <laughs> we haven't even started the mission and we already have two. That's what's fantastic about it. And yes, the, the vector map rules uh, is what allowed me to do this. And so therefore it's more than just rolling dice to see what happens to you. Um, no, not, not, not really. I technically just, uh, I invested in um, life insurance and I spun the wheel and I landed on the square where the life insurance paid me $50,000. Yay. <laughs> Oh, that was strategy, by the way, because if I had not invested in the life insurance, then that never would have happened to me. And so, you know, screw you. I just played game of life better than you. Okay, so uh, Ifland, he gets two experience points. That doesn't go up. It's always two for the kill. Uh, he did use his aim skill, but he's out of the mission, so we don't need to, to denote it. And we are... Having a good start. Okay, mission turn one. So the escorts are leaving on turn three. So we gotta put this up here. So normally it says escort arrives. Now it's escort exits on turn three. So our mission turn is turn one and off we go. Our tactical points are zero right now. So we have a move. Well, the move action was to put these guys on the board. And then the return action, this isn't technically a return action, but but I'm but, but that's my little mental thing that I'm doing so I don't forget. Um and yes, I do want them to enter from the flank. Uh I can always choose to go to the other flank if for whatever reason an escort ends up over here. Okay, and then we get to do escort phase. So I'm gonna do this guy first. It's a four. He's going to above trailing, which is not good. That means that we can have a really bad day. And then this one is a nine. He also goes to above trailing. The good news is only one of those is going to act next time, but uh, this is a very bad uh, change of events. Um, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I have to spend a tactical point to delay my entry. I don't have any. Dang it, dang it, dang it. I could have delayed until the escorts left the mission. And I was not able to do that. So we're in trouble, folks. A lot of trouble, in fact. Not just a little bit of trouble, a lot of trouble. Um, okay. So uh, nothing we can do about that now. So we got um, recovery where that's where we do the regroup action. So the flight limit's gonna get reduced by one, and then our tactical points are gonna go up by four, eight, 10 points. So we all of a sudden have 10 tactical points now. Okay, so next we do uh, blast and flak, cohesion. There's nothing to do on any of those. And so we move on to turn two. So now we have the move action. And this is where it gets a little dicey. We can move all of our guys to nose high, or tail high, I mean. But if the uh, escort attacks the, this group, uh, we probably will outnumber the escort, but, that, but if the escort does a breakaway, every single one of those fighters goes home, uh, or bombers, or fighters. Um, so he can cause our entire double stack to, to be wiped. This is why escorts are very, very bad. And it's also why going to zero tactical points was a bad move on my part, because I could have avoided those escorts if I had just saved a few. But I really wanted the two victory points for the kill. So lots of challenging choices. And that's what makes the game great. Okay, so this guy though is not going there. Uh, we're gonna go to the uh, level, tail level. So uh, they're at least gonna break away. And then, of course, uh, these guys entered here. Yeah. 
And okay. So now the uh, this is where uh, we find out what happens. We're gonna roll for this, and it needs to be something lower than a five. If it's lower than a five, we're in great shape. Oh, and it's a seven. So they're going after the box with the most fighters, and we just lost. They just ruined everything. Absolutely everything is ruined by one set of fighters, and um, all because of a die roll. All right, it's only two Spitfires. We outnumber it by a mile, but he has altitude advantage. It's the BF-110s and they have a bomb attached, so they have a very poor... So a BF-110 is even worse, right? It's further down and um, they were higher than us, but we had more than them. So we do this row, and there's not a single row here where we survive. The B is all fighters exit the map. That's the B outcome. So with the exception of this one, all fighters exit the map. So everything that we wanted to do is ruined. Now all we're doing is we're praying that we don't get the X, because that means we get killed. Um, the uh, scattered outcome, which is the S, uh, we exit in that situation as well. So it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing with scattered is uh, the, the escort returns. So we're going to roll to find out. We get a 9, which is great. Uh, it puts us here, so we get the B outcome. Um, so this guy is no longer around, so he's gone. And the, uh, the fact that I spent my tactical points and could not wait for the escorts to leave is really burning me. So all of our guys exit everything. Boom and boom. And then all the bombs exit. We were going to rock their world with those bombs. That was going to be 4th of July. All of it's ruined. And we're not even done. So now we got to do this one. He rolled a six. He's going to nose level. And then the last one rolled a ten. And he's going to above trailing. So we're going to be uh, ruined before this even starts. Blast and flak, cohesion, nothing happens. Attack, nothing happens. And now we go to turn three and the escorts exit. So they're gone. So these guys, uh, nothing happens. That's all we had to do was survive those two rounds. And that guy moved to above trailing and ruined our, our Christmas just like that. I'm telling you folks, we, we were, we were going to have, uh, with this being an inbound mission or two victory points, this was a very large lost opportunity. Um, two victory points per bomber. Uh, let me, if you can indulge me, let's talk about how those bombs would have worked. Because uh, I think you would, you would really appreciate it. So what we would do is we would aim at an element. And this is something new, so we'll go ahead and do the teaching right now. We would aim at an element, and then that would be where the uh, target is. And I'm trying to find my target markers. So we have eight bombs, right? Because there's there was eight fighters, each with a bomb. So what I would have done is I would have said, I'm targeting this one twice with two of the bombs. I'm targeting this one twice. I'm targeting this one twice. Well, you know what, I don't even need to put them all out there, but, but I'm targeting each one twice, right? This is how powerful this is going to be, right? So I have all those bombs out there, and then we're going to start, like, let's start with this element right here. So what I would do is I'm going to have to roll two dice, because there's two of them. It doesn't matter which fighter you're, you're using 
It doesn't matter which bomb it is. We just know that there's two bombs going here and both of those, all of them are BF-110, so we're gonna use this column. If I roll a one to a four, it misses. A five to a 10 is a hit. So I'm gonna roll two dice, one for each target. And there's a hit and there's a miss. So then what would happen is this would get flipped to detonation and then this gets taken off the map and we would just go around. So here, both of these detonate. Here, I got a seven and a five, so both detonate. And then here, uh, one of them detonates, okay? So that was actually really good. That was a fantastic outcome, actually. All right, but we're not over yet. What does the detonation do? So then we go to this blast table and we've got to figure out the blast location and the blast effect. So for the blast location, we're going to roll a red and black die, and that's going to pinpoint uh, exactly where the location is. And the higher number is going to be, um, so it says if it's a high black die, then the number on the black die, uh, the detonation marker goes in that space. If it's a red die, it moves there. And I'll show you the map in a second so you understand what I'm saying. If I roll doubles, it's a complete miss. So just because we made it through this first phase and there's a detonation, that doesn't mean that we actually damaged anything yet. Uh, if I roll doubles, it's a, it's still, it's gonna be a dud. Okay, so we're not out of the woods yet, but we're close, all right? So let's go ahead and start with this guy. I'm gonna roll two dice, and you can see I got a seven black, four red. So I'm gonna flip over to the map here and for any skies above the Reich map, you use this one. That's why I wrote that note. So the seven is, the black seven is the larger number. So this is where the detonation occurs. And one of the things we, you need to make sure is like if you detonate out here, um, it's too far away from a bomber. And out here uh, is a miss because they only hit what's next to them. Or it's possible, I guess, here would hit this guy. Um, but anyways. We're right here, rock solidly in B7. So um, if you have a, a formation like this, and the reason why this guy is silhouetted is because um, you either have this formation alone without him, or you have a four. So in our case, we don't have this guy. We just have these three. So the B7 is right behind that guy. So the detonation occurs exactly in that location, this space right here, okay? So then to uh, play it out, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, now we go to the blast table and we're not out of the woods yet. We gotta roll one more time. And if I roll a one to a four, there's no damage. So you see this, uh, one to four up here is a miss. A doubles here is a miss. A one to four here is a miss. There's no actual damage unless I can get one more good roll, okay? So now that's what I'm exactly I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna roll and I actually got a nine. So the nine is awesome. I destroy a bomber and one other bomber suffers the damage. Now, who do I destroy? Number rolled in a lesser die and locate the immediate effect on the, oh, 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 that's what it was. Uh, this was a seven, it's even worse. Um, this was a seven, right? And this was a four, wasn't it? So it's even worse. That four means we did no damage. That's, that's what happened. I don't get to roll again. There's no extra roll here. When you do this roll up here, the higher number is the location, the lower number is this. So the seven four, that was a complete miss. But that marker, that detonation marker, uh, that causes um, all kinds of uh, cohesion check failures. And let me show you that real quick. So I did no damage at all, but right here, after the cohesion check, each detonation marker uh, degrades the element's cohesion by one level. So you go from good to loose or loose to kaput. If already kaput, then a bomber will fall out just because of that detonation. So this detonation right here did no damage, but at bare minimum during the cohesion check, we're going to have this situation, the whole element's gonna go loose. Okay, so that's what would have happened with that element. So we had two bombs we dropped, one missed, the other one detonated. 
but the one that detonated did no damage. And the whole element's loose, though, because we still caused their formation to uh, get a little rocky. Is that making sense? And then we would just repeat this process across all of these. So, um, for example, uh, let's do another one. Um, I, none of this is happening because I, I'm not a smart person and I screwed up the game. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Do this element right here. So I rolled a 9 and a 6. This is an excellent roll, by the way. The 9 is here, which is good. So the first detonation occurred right here. This one we still need to roll for. We're going to put that aside. And then the 6, the red 6... means that I did one hit. And then you can see that's what this means down here. Um, so, so then what I would do is I would take this and apply one hit. So if no bummer is in the space, there is no immediate blast effect. It only applies to a bomber. So we get to pick which bomber. So I could say, okay, I'm gonna hit this one. And then boom, I got the eight wing. And this is just like the rest of the game. I would roll an eight. Actually, this bomber would fall in that case, right? That eight would cause him to fall. So now all of a sudden I'm getting some staff experience. My, you know, my fighter who dropped the bomb is an auxiliary. So I wouldn't get any actual fighter experience. But if it was one of my name pilots, I would have gotten experience for dropping the bomber, and then this wing damage would have gone with him and he would have gone over here and then we'd have to pursue him, right? With four wing damage, okay? And um, and then I'm not done, I still got another one. So this other one here would roll a seven and three. So you already know that that's a miss, but the seven, the red seven would cause it to go, and I'm just looking at it uh, off camera here, the detonation marker would go there. Okay, so this would be gone because that fighter would have been moved or the bomber would have been moved over here. But then during the cohesion check, I would have one, two, three, right? I would roll, okay, they passed the cohesion check. But contraire, mon frere, now that I've finished rolling, this detonation would cause it to go loose. And then this detonation would cause it to go kaput. So now all the, the values here are have a minus two. So I'm hoping that uh, that helps you to understand how the bombs work. Um, they're pretty cool that way. Um, they miss a lot, though, as you just saw. I mean, we, we only hit a bomber once, and we've done, what, four of them? Um, so we've done four bombs. We've hit one bomber once. Uh, but it does cause a lot of disruption. Now, the cables that come with Storm Above the Reich, they work a little differently. They don't do this. They don't have any detonations. Um, so the cable thing is a whole whole new ball of wax. Now, rockets work this way too. So when you shoot rockets, you're going to do a similar thing. In fact, you can see right here that when you uh, aim and you're deploying rockets, uh, so if you're doing cable, we go to 2A. If we're firing rockets, we do the same blast location and effect just like the bombs, okay? Now with the, um, with the cable, the cohesion of the element is gonna dictate what your dice do. So if I rolled like, like a 10 and a nine, we got 19. So two proximity markers are gonna get drawn because they're in good order. And so if we miss, nothing happens. Um, we remove the target marker and then randomly draw a proximity marker, place it in the element and it stays until the cohesion phase. So it's gonna cause the cohesion of the element to go down. Now, of these markers, we ignore all of them except for the one with the numbers. If you draw the one with the numbers, um, then a collision happens and they take some damage from that. And I'd have to look that up because I think um, you, you would draw two damage markers for them. I, I'm guessing. I, I need to go look on page 40. But we'll cover this when we actually do cables. 
which, by the way, are not available to us because we're in Germany North. So this is so actually, since we're in Germany North and they're not available to us, um, I better just look it up because it's going to be years before we ever get to try this. And where's my rule book? Here we go. No. Oh, here it is. So page 40 is what it's saying I need to look at. So... So if it's even the bummer fight collides, ignore the, unless it's impact. If impact, roll a die and check for collision. Oh, so if we roll even, we draw four damage markers and place them on the bomber. So the bomber would get four damage markers and we just, you know, resolve that normally. If we roll odd, That's the thing I don't understand, is what does it mean? Oh, um, if the die roll is less than the number printed on the marker, a collision occurs. The collision cannot be canceled. If it's equal to or higher, the collision is avoided. So I guess that means that I would roll a die, and um, if I got a two or a less, a collision occurs, and then I would draw four damage markers. I don't think I need to do the even odd, because that's a fighter thing. Um, Boy, that's really crappy, if that's what that is. Because uh, rolling a two or less is pretty easy to do. Ignore the marker's collision effect unless it's impact. If impact, roll a die and check for collision. Yeah, this cable sucks. I mean, yeah, having two markers for cohesion checks is fine and all, but the cable... I mean, you don't even damage anything. Yeah, that's that's crappy. I, I don't even ever want to buy one. Um, but okay, that's enough of that uh, exploring down. And here's what's even worse. Look at this. They cost one OP each. As if they they mean something. That's even worse. So I um, I looked in the index. There's an index on the back. So this part's done really well. And there's a cable page 24. So even though this is referencing me to page 40, page 24 is actually better. So uh, that was actually a very poor reference on their part. Um, if you're willing to write on your components, uh, I highly recommend you write 24 here, circle this and say, uh, you know, do 24 instead. Uh, because page 24 is where it's at. And, and here's what page 24 says. It's the, it's the blast section. And um, yes, the, the page that they recommended is what happens when you have a proximity marker, but that's checking to see if your fighter collided into the bomber. This is checking to see what happens with the cable and the bomber, and it tells you exactly right here. So yes, you roll, and if you get a two or a less, you put four damage markers on the bomber because the cable gets wrapped around the bomber or whatever. But if if you roll uh, greater than a two, then the cable does absolutely nothing. It's just that that marker is going to cause the cohesion, you know, possibly to go down. That's it. That's all the cable does. So. Um, there, it's exactly like we, we just figured out. Um, it's not very good. So I'm glad we're in Germany North because those bombs are a bit better, as I hope you can agree. So uh, I know I'm spending some extra time here going over something hypothetical, but I also hope that that gave you an idea of just how devastating it was <laughs> to have us get intercepted like that. And, um, and it's all because I didn't have any tactical points. Because uh, I chased after one bomber. And by chasing after one bomber, I lost the opportunity to possibly get five or six. 
Because those eight BF-110s, they still had full ammo and they would have been able to do swarm. They were gonna start causing all kinds of trouble. Um, so yeah, 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 I know. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Here we go. Uh, we are now done with the escort phase. We go to recovery, blast and flak cohesion, and there's no attack. Or I'm sorry, we moved the mission turn up. So this is where we get to do something. So we're gonna go ahead and attack. These two guys are gonna come in uh, tail level. These guys are gonna come in oblique low. And um, because we have a different position, we will get position advantage. And depending on what I do, we might be able to get a Rada advantage as well, have a space with two fighters. So let's figure out what we wanna do. So um, in order to get the Rada, I have to have a space with two fighters and they have to be the same and they have to be determined. So these two guys could be like, for example, here, that would give us the Rada advantage, assuming they su uh, survive the collision check. The problem is, is I want this guy to come in sideways evasive so he can absorb the collision check for them. Uh, I can't put him here because there's no bomber over here for me to attack. So the only way I can be in the same space as them is if they go here, which is a four threat area, and then he comes in like this to go after that, and that would work. But the problem is, is it's a four, four threat area. Now, if I was able to drop the bombs before they did this, this whole thing would have been detonated and they would have been kaput and that would have been dropped to a two threat. That would have been a lot better. So the Rada advantage may not be worth it. Uh, coming in at four threat on the tail is probably not a smart idea. Um, and the other problem with being on the tail is like you have to do continuing fire. Well, if you're coming from the nose, you typically keep moving. So you fire on the target and then you move over to here and then you do continuing fire back here, right? If you're coming from the tail, you typically don't do any movement. And so you're gonna be here for a four threat continuing fire in addition. So um, the strategy of trying to get that extra attack advantage may not be worth it, is where I'm going. Now, this is a threat of two, and you're, you're gonna look at any of these formations. Um, this one's a three, right? Because he's extra protected by these guys over here. But most of them have a two in the rear. Uh, and these two formations are the most vulnerable. If you try to go for the front two formations, they actually have a three in the rear, and this three, four, three, because they're being protected by the groups that are behind them. Um, so we got to pick one on one of these rear groups and we're going to just pick on this one and I can just do a two and see, that's a three. So that's actually not good. So we're going to pick on this one back here. That's a two and a two. So this one is the weakest formation from the, from the rear. So we're going to go ahead and pick on them. And then these guys are coming in. Uh, obviously, um, uh, we don't need them to do um, anything for the Rada advantage, but we're gonna get the position advantage because as you can see, the uh, elevation is different. So we don't have to worry about elevation issues. And, or I'm sorry, the, the elevation is, is gonna cause us to have a nice advantage there. Uh, you got a three here or a two there. So we could try to, to do this and then that would get us a Rada right? But now we're going to have to do a collision check with these two guys. And I don't know if I want to do that. Um, now to get Rata, um, or it's Rot, I, again, I don't know how to pronounce that word. To get it, both of them have to be determined. So I could do like this, for example. And so they both still can attack that guy, but I'm just not going to get the attack advantage anymore. I still have to do a collision check, which this guy will probably survive because he's evasive, but that's the um, that's the challenge we have. Or I can split them and just deal with the fact that one of them's gonna have three, or I can even try to do this, and now I'm flying into a fourth red area, which is risky, but I could do it. Um, I'm, you know, I could be taking a chance that I'm gonna down this one 
which will get a minus one here, and this will turn into a three before I actually take his turn. Uh, that's always a possibility. Now, why would I do that? Well, I would do that to avoid the collision check. And is the, avoiding the collision check worth that much? Um, to go into a four lethality area, I'm not sure it is. Especially if you can just make one of your guys evasive. Like, who cares? So I'm going to go ahead and make Buttfargan evasive and just do that. And uh, this exciting game, or mission, not game, mission, is turning into some boring fest where I'm down to just four fighters. <laughs> uh, had so much potential. Okay, so we do that. Um, all these other steps don't matter. And we're going to go and attack. So what's everybody going to do? Uh, we can go to the nose. Uh, the uh, flank on that side is bad because they're anchored. If we go to the nose... It's not too bad, except now we got to attack a different group. Because if I try to attack that group, they're protected. That's the thing with map two. They're a bit more protected than normal, especially if you don't have bombs and stuff rocking their cohesion. Um, so what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Um, and what I could do is have them just switch places. And that's actually not a bad idea. So I can do So the um the FW190s are going to do a dive roll towards the oblique and then the uh the BF109s that are coming in they're going to do a climb towards the tail. So we're going to just switch they're going to just swap spots and just keep coming in and attacking. That sounds like a good enough plan to me. So what else do we need to do? We need to do a collision check, and then we can be off and running. So the collision check is a proximity two, which I think we get to ignore. Let me check. Yep, if in invasive mode, you get to ignore it. So that's exactly what we want to do. Um, now, I could have rolled. Yeah, I get a three, so they wouldn't have collided. But uh, one of the fighters still has to, like, exit. Like, it's it's nasty. It's totally nasty, the collision check. Okay, um, let's resolve some hits here. Find a place to put the camera where you can see pretty decently. All right, which one are we going to do first? I think we should do the oblique attack first, because I think those are the weakest attacks. And we're going to do the weak one, uh, Oblacer. He's coming in uh, oblique low, and um, he has uh, evasive. The threat level is two. So threat level two, oblique low, he's going to take a hit. Um, we do have a position advantage. We did get one of those. Um, we're going to take a hit, yeah, and I'm going to use the position advantage, so I cancel the hit. And then he's going to progress one, which there's nowhere to go. Uh, well, he goes back here, which is a, uh, a two. So this is a BF-109 with a two in evasive. Uh, is he roll diving? No, he's climbing. Uh, he could have skipped, but a two evasive is still a miss. So uh, we're good to go for him. Uh, now, this one was not evasive. I don't know why I had him turned over. Or did I have it backwards? I had it backwards. I'm sorry. Um, Puttfargan was the evasive one. So he's the one that's over here. And then Oblicer is the one that hasn't attacked yet. Okay, neither of them have skills, so it's not like it matters. So now what's next? I think I should probably attack with bar next. Well, I'm a little scared to attack anymore. All right, let's do the oblique. We'll do it. He's going in direct, uh, direct, low, two, threat. Oh, we hit. And then he's going to progress one. So he'll be over here, just like the other one. But we got to hit it. That's... 
That's unexpected. And that was uh, Obliser. I will take that. So here we go. We have a nine wing. I rolled a two. So nothing happened there, but uh, the bomber has some damage on it. And let's see if we can get that camera a little closer. All right, so we got some damage on it. Um, we got to do the continuing fire. And this one, he is doing a roll climb. Uh, and he is at a two, so he does take a hit. So that part's a little problematic. Let's find out what happens to Obliser here. And it's not good. It's a cockpit hit with a high number. Always, always, somebody always screws you over. Okay, so now we're going to do bar. And bar is coming in tail level. And remember, he has a cannon. So tail level with a threat of two, determined, means he takes a hit and he does a hit. Now, bar has some skills. His skill is quick, so we're not going to use that yet. And he will take a hit. So let's do that first. And he gets a bad hit as well. We're, we're going to possibly lose two fighters here. And the hit that he does... is an engine. I rolled a four, so nothing happens. It just flips over. This is gone. Now we do continuing fire. Threat is still two. And he is dive rolling. So there's no uh, escort markers, so we're okay there. Uh, he will take a hit, but what he's going to do is use his quick skill and move to the evasive. So then he doesn't take a hit. Um, I'm not sure it matters, but we're going to go ahead and do it because I think he's out. So these guys, by the way, are going to go... They were doing high, so they're there. And this one's going low, so he's right behind the camera right now. And he went evasive, so he's actually further behind the camera. And then we, at last but not least, is we have Aaron's. So uh, threat level of two. You can see he does two hits, and then there's no ammo left. So these two hits are always going to get to do. And then he's basically out of the mission. Unless uh, we have like a guaranteed kill situation that he can pursue a bomber with. Um, but two hits is still good, and Aaron's is not, he doesn't have any skills, I don't think. No, he does not. So two hits for him. We have a wing and an engine. So we'll do red for first, black for second. And you can see the uh, wing missed, but the black hit. So this wing damage stays on him, but the em engine damage does cause this to fall. So we actually do have a bomber that's available for interception, and uh, he doesn't have a lot of damage on him. He's by no means a guaranteed kill. But um, Aaron's here is going to get an experience point, and so is our staff for the fallen. Aaron's is up to three experience points, in fact, and then the uh, staff has three as well. So I, man, oh man, with two victory points per bomber, I was so stoked about this mission. Uh, all right, so then uh, we got to do um, our continuing fire. And so we are roll diving, and we get to skip continuing fire. And we are exactly doing what it says. We're roll diving. You can see it right here. So we're going to skip continuing fire, and that is awesome. It finally worked out in our advantage, and he's going to move to there. All right, so we got a fallen uh, bomber. We have another one that's damaged, and we have a lot of damaged fighters on our end. So the mission turn goes to four. We move. There is no move. 
we return. So that one goes up and the guy underneath here goes up, this one. So we have two guys that are available, two that are injured. And now we do recover. So we're gonna start with Bar here. Bar has an eight fuel damage. Yes. <laughs> we, I, I, look, I'm not arguing that there are so many things in this game that don't go our way. And I'm fully confessing that I've had quite a few that have gone my way. So it's sort of becoming a wash, but man, oh man. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it again. This is, this is like the coup de gras. Let's do it again. Come on. Oh, we did. <laughs> we did. It's a nine. <laughs> I am, uh, I gotta play that lottery. Oh. <laughs> uh, if only I could roll dice in a lottery. Um, okay. We just did recovery. Blast and flak, cohesion. There is a chance that cohesion will fail. I rolled a nine, so um, I'm, I'm continuing my streak of rolling high numbers, but this time I wanted a low one, so uh, that's okay. I will take it. Um, then we do attack and nothing happens. So now we move to mission turn five. We have a move action. So with the move action, I'm gonna send Aaron after that bomber. He's gonna go intercept. But Vargan is gonna come in high tail and then these two are gonna come up like he's moving up there and this one moved to here. So he's not even gonna be in action for another turn. But that's sort of how this is going to work. I, I, um, I, I'm going to go try to get the victory points that I can. And I'm going to send my cannon guy to do it. Because uh, the cannon, as you saw, was very, very powerful when you get to pick which type of damage uh, they take. So um, and then we're BF-109 guys who don't have a cannon. They're going to stay out here and, and try to shoot them down. So hopefully you can see how you're going to start specializing some of your fighters. You know, one fighter is going to be specialized for pursuit and the other one's going to be specialized for taking them down. So, um, uh, like I said, if we would have had those bombs, it would have been, this would have been a very good day. Okay. Um, cohesion check again. Roll to seven, nothing happens. And now we do our attack. So Buttfargan is going to try to take out this guy. Uh, it is still a two threat. This minus one here doesn't help over there. So we have a two threat. It's a high tail. I guess I could have tried to move down to level tail before I attacked. Does it matter? Does it matter? I think level tail does do more damage, but I'm going to go ahead and do high tail. Um, I think the bombers have like a better angle on you if you're coming in high on the tail. You know, because they have their guns on mounted on the top of the plane. Uh, but I would think that if I'm coming in high tail that it's easier to hit them too. Because, uh, you know, you're, you're sort of aiming down and shooting at them. But I guess uh, we're going to find out. We're doing high tail. Buttfargan, am I going to do evasive or uh, I'm going to do determined? Yeah, let's do determined. So high tail... Two determined is a hit. And boy, gosh darn it, we got... I mean, that's that's luck right there. We got really lucky. But one, two, three, four hits out of the six options. Yeah, that really was a good call. But see, look, level tail, five out of the six were hits. So, um, but yeah, we get our hit in, and that's what I was looking for. But Fargan, for the win. Um... Or is Peter is his name now. So we have a wing damage. And I rolled a one, so that's fine. And the wing damage is two more. So he's up to five wing damage, which in 1942 was enough to take him down, but he needs six now. But uh, that is not enough to make him fall. And now we're going to do continuing fire. He... Oh, I... I gotta say where he's going. Um, well, I mean, to be honest, it's he's going here. And the reason we're never going high, it's always a dive when we go this way, because you can see he they get plus one bonuses if we're coming in high from the side. 
So we don't want to come in high from the side because they get bonuses. So um, uh, we're going to always be low over on this side. And then we're going to be high from the tail. All right. Um, so we are too determined and we would get bounced, but we're OK. Um, we do take a hit. So let's figure that out. Come on, that's an awful one. That's a nine. I'm only getting lucky for so long. So he goes there. And then uh, that's the end of the turn. So mission turn six. Uh, we do a move. Oblicer can then do an attack. We'll go ahead and let him. Uh, bar moves up. And then this guy is going to have to recover. So I need a nine now. I got an eight, which is a great roll, but it's not enough. Um, so this is a potential permanent death. So that's not good. And I believe that was a wing. And, and please looky here. I mean, that's a 70% death right there. But only if I roll really poor. If I can get up to the top, it's a 40% death, which I'm still not excited about. 40% is still odds that I don't like. Okay, um, cohesion check. Eight. He's still rolling really high. And then we're going to go ahead and, again, I'm not going to get out my markers, but we're doing high tail and we're diving this way. So, high tail, threat two. And this time it's a hit on us. And that's Oblicer. I don't think I can do anything about it. So we get one hit for that. And the bomber gets nothing. So it's a wing seven. Uh, that's, I mean, we're just drawing really bad markers. And then um, I need continuing fire. We are roll diving, so skip continuing fire. So we're good there. Well, good, relatively speaking. All right, mission turn is seven. Uh, we get to do a move. So, Bar is going to go ahead and attack. And you know what? I think I forgot to use his cannon. Didn't he hit somebody? And I think I only drew one marker. That was a mistake on my part. And I'm sure somebody probably is going to comment about that. Um, and then we're going to recover the wing. I need a seven. I got an eight. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm not whining. I'm not going to whine. Um... So we're going to come in from the oblique low. And like I said, we're going to climb high to the tail. We're just repeating in circles, trying to take out this one bomber the best we can. So oblique low. Uh, the threat, as you can see, is two. So oblique low two is a hit on us. And uh, bar can't do anything about that. So let's see what happens to him. It's a cockpit five. And then we do continuing fire. Uh, we were determined. It's a two. Determined mode only. After breakaway, move an escort. Okay, that doesn't matter. We get another hit though. And these are both doable. We can possibly survive these. So he is in that box. Mission turn eight. We're almost out of the turns for the game. We move up. And he does nothing, but now he's going to recover. So let me just grab his damage markers. Okay, I'm going to do uh, red. This one's we're going to resolve first. So red on that one, black on this one. If I fail the red, we, the black one doesn't matter. And I failed the red. Holy buckets. I failed them both. Oh, come on. It's a wing. All right, so we got to put them on the wing. Bar is out. And I'm not even sure it matters what happens now because, yeah, they're going to do a cohesion check. 
he keeps passing. I mean, he needs a, like a three or less to fail. We have one guy that's able to attack. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, see from a mission turn perspective, we only have two turns left. So if this turn we attack, next turn he's gonna return and then it's game over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the level. So I'm gonna give myself the best chance to hit. And my only option is to destroy this thing. And I don't even know if that's possible. So I'm gonna have to ride the tail to be able to destroy. And that's it. Uh, so we're gonna do next turn, turn nine. He's going to attack. And then um, they're gonna do cohesion. It's still good. I'm coming in at tail level with a threat of two. Tail level with a threat of two, and we have to do a collision check, and he does move one, which is still gonna be a threat of two, so that doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we have to do a collision check. And this is with the bomber. So the collision check is no impact. Now, uh, the one good news is it stays out there, but I'm not even gonna bother because uh, uh, he's not falling uh, during the next cohesion check. And now we gotta just make sure he survives continuing fire. And we were dive rolling, and although nothing happens, and yes, we get hit. Oh, everything else was fine, but we get hit. So this could be disastrous. And it's a seven rudder, so let's take care of that right now. And I rolled a three. So uh, three of my fighters are up for being killed. And uh, this is not good. All right. Um, mission's over. Cannons come off the board. This was a dismal failure. Um, all because that escort intercepted eight of our fighters. I mean, think about that. I mean, we had eight fighters that could have been doing all kinds of serious damage, even after they dropped their bombs, even if the bombs didn't damage too many people, just having a kaput, right? Where these are minus two. I mean, you saw we just did a whole bunch of pass-throughs where we were dealing with two threat. What if we were dealing with zero? We could have gotten maybe more hits in. There's so much, so much. And it's all because I spent all my TP because I really wanted to get those two victory points from the beginning. So the vector map screwed me. <laughs> oh, damn you, vector math. Um, okay. 1943 comes out. This guy comes on. Aaron's is the one going after him. He has an engine damage. So we get two TP from that. And he has a wing and then we have 10 tactical points on our board. So I'm gonna make this thing go up 10 tactical points. So we're up to 12. So I'm gonna just move it down here to denote that I'm on 12. I think that might be why this, you know, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, okay, let's roll for the wing. I got a 10, he's destroyed. So this doesn't matter. Um, we don't get any experience points. The plane is destroyed though. Uh, which gives us Staffel experience, but just not the pilot. So the Staffel is going to get two more experience. So they're up to five. And so this is a, um, I mean, I know that's a minus seven, but, you know, then we're going to have a plus five. And uh, here we have um, two more experience because we did kill another bomber. So we did our, our victory points. So we actually have four victory points, which, you know, hooray, right? Um, for 1943 early, we need 20. So it's five more than before, but we're already at four. I mean, that's one fifth of the way and there's six missions. So we're on track actually to get to 20. Um, but the thing is, is not every mission is gonna be an inbound mission. So um, we would have only had two victory points otherwise. So, okay, uh, there's a lot of lessons learned in this, a lot of heartbreak, a little bit. Oh, I'm not even done with the heartbreak yet. Oh, geez, we're going to have to deal with dead pilots now. 
Uh, let's do that. Then we can end this dang video two hours. If I would have taken out my rant, I'd be done a half hour ago, wouldn't I? I'm so sorry. All right, let's do rudder. All right, I rolled a nine. So Obliser makes it home and he gets an experience point. So very happy with that. One experience point for Beliser. He's at three. So now we got our expert here, Bar. Oh no, that's a two. So now he has a 70% chance of dying. And I rolled an eight. So uh, he's wounded. So Bar gets wounded. He does get an experience, which actually lets him level up. So he has quick, and I'm gonna give him a luck so he can stop getting hit so much. And um, Puttfargan, that's a six, which puts me in the top shelf. So 40% chance of dying. And that's a nine. So he comes out and that could have been disastrous, folks. At, you know, all across the board, all three of them. The fact that one of them's wounded and two of them lived, I'll take that. Uh, but that's, that, that's the issue with, um, you know, trying to take on these formations with your primary pilots and there's no damage to the bombers um, and you're dealing with the full lethality of the, of the board. Uh, you know, the Americans are getting smarter. They're, they're putting their bombers together in a more cohesive manner and, uh, you know, the British stopped bombing during the daytime a long time ago. So they think the Americans are nuts. And um, uh, the Americans, uh, they do have a plan and it is doing some damage. So anyways, as always, stay awesome, stay healthy and safe, and uh, we'll see you next video.